Legend has it there are seven JavaScript game engines scattered across the land, and once a year, on Challenger Day, they can be found in the real world. They are not as often seen as names you know, like Phaser 3, Construct 3, CreateJS, or Cocos Creator, but they each have a unique perspective that we can learn from. Well, today is Challenger Day, and I'm gonna find them. Let me know in the comments below which ones pique your interest as we go on our mission. There's also an Easter egg, so let me know if you spot it. All right, I got my Wiimote. Anything, oh, maybe I need, maybe I need these. Let's do this. The first one we are looking for is called Contra JS, and its natural habitat is small spaces. The goal of this library is to be as lightweight as possible for use in size-constrained situations such as the JS 13K Game Jam where entries have to be 13 kilobytes or less. Consider Contra your meticulously size-aware friend that has all the basics like asset loading, input, a game loop, canvas rendering, tile sheet and sprite sheet support, and optimized data structures like object pools and quad trees. It is great for prototyping, game jams, and when every byte counts. Another resident of small spaces is LittleJS, which is also geared towards being super lightweight for use in space-constrained environments. It is designed to be little, yet suitable for game jams and commercial games. LittleJS provides WebGL or Canvas rendering, basic physics, particle systems, audio, input for keyboard, mouse, gamepad, and touch, as well as debugging tools. LittleJS can render well north of 10,000 sprites at 60 frames per second. It is well documented, but light on tutorials. Next up, we'll search Shrubbery for Taro a thin framework for 3D games. Taro is built on top of 3JS and uses Canon ES for rigid body physics. It brings a Unity mono behavior inspired component system to help with writing more modular and extendable code. There's also support for 3D positional audio. You can find an in-browser visual editor for easily seeing what Taro can do. You can also use it for creating and positioning objects in a scene that can then be exported and loaded by Taro. There's documentation and a basic a guide to help you get started. Finding the next one is going to be a little bit trickier, as we have to go back in time before we can see it. That's why I brought this. And there it is. Replay. It is inspired by React and uses a declarative functional API that is generally not typical in game engines or game code. Those familiar with React should feel quite at home here with concepts like one-way data flow, props, read-only state, and contexts to help reduce prop drilling. If those concepts are foreign to you, then Replay is something you should try just to get exposure to the ideas. It is in early development and likely to see many breaking changes, so it is well suited for learning or prototyping. Replay also has support for writing automated tests using Jest, a popular JavaScript testing framework you'll find an interactive tutorial for creating a Flappy Bird type game and documentation to help you get started as well as a starter template that supports building for iOS and Android. For the next one, we'll have to summon it from the computer, specifically from repelit.com. Kaboom.js is functional but does not mimic React. This fun library is easy to get into and is built around a component system for adding functionality to game objects. Instead of creating a sprite object with position, scale, and opacity properties, you would add individual sprite, position, scale, and opacity components to one or more game objects. This model allows for code reuse in a modular way. Being that we summoned it from repelit.com, it has first class support in the repelit online code editor, so you can start trying it out in just a few clicks. There's a getting started tutorial, documentation, and a whole bunch of examples to help you get started. The second to last engine is often found around corners or places you wouldn't think to look. Pixelbox takes inspiration from Pico8 and Unity and comes with an editor that can be separately downloaded. The editor helps you create and play sprites, test your game without having to manually start a local server, create tile-based levels, make sound effects and music, and build for itch, game jolt, or Facebook with a click of a button. The programming API is designed to be simple and easy to use, although it is light on documentation and examples. The last engine on our list has been spotted near caves. 
So let's see what we can find. Looks like it's our lucky day. Here we have CTJS and it also comes with an editor where you can do all of your development from designing a level to writing JavaScript code. The game rendering is powered by Pixie.js. Additional features like basic collisions, tile map support, playing audio, skeletal animations with dragon bones, a system for handling keyboard, mouse, and gamepad input, and building for the web or as a desktop app is also included. There's a good amount of documentation and guides to help you get started, including tutorials for three different games. Looks like the legend was real. I hope you enjoyed learning about the seven hidden JavaScript game engines. If you have a favorite, let me know in the comments below. For more on game development on the web, check out this video over here. Now, how do I use these?